We're here at Euro PCR 2017, and we're going to be talking about device management of heart failure. And I have with me Dr. Horst Sievert from Frankfurt, and Dr. Joseph Bartonek from Aust. So we're going to then be talking about this incredibly important issue. It would be helpful to begin with, is this going to be a, a niche, a small boutique sort of environment in which we're going to work? This will really be the next big wave in interventional medicine. Let's say after coronary, peripheral, structural, valvular, heart failure treatment will be the next big wave. And there's lots of things we should do and should develop. Joseph, tell us a little bit, of, are there lots of different kinds? Tell us about the two broadest groups of heart failure. Yes, heart failure is a basic growing epidemic. It's a last frontier for interventional cardiologists. And in fact, we have two groups, two large groups of patients with heart failure. One with reduced ejection fraction, a second with uh, preserved left ventricular function. What is important to realize that both groups bear very poor prognosis. Both groups suffer from the high mortality and um, current approaches, despite some improvement in the last 10 to 15 years, cannot address this burden of increased mortality and morbidity. So there's a clear need to find the novel approaches in addition to existing therapies to improve the quality of life and survival of these patients. Sounds like there are several different pathophysiologies involved. And how does that impact then on device development? Horst, can you talk about that? It's not going to be one size fits all. Well, no, I mean, Currently, when we look at the landscape of device-based therapy for heart failure, we have on one side devices which are targeting a specific part of the disease, for example, uh, uh, mitoclip for functional MR or uh, aneuloplastic for functional MR. And there are on the other side devices which are treating the overall aspects of heart failure. And these, for example, things like neuromodulation uh, carotid body modulation, bowel stim implantation, and so on. So we have different types of targets and different types of devices to, to attempt these targets. So this then will be patient-specific management. How do, you, how do you then work through the diastolic, systolic heart failure to, to come to some um, identification of optimal for Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones? Well, that requires um, a very cooperative uh, teamwork of uh, different subspecialties in the cardiology, big uh, heart failure specialists, interventionalists, big surgeons or EP specialists, where they together identify the, the most prominent feature that is driving the heart failure progression in the given patient. And I believe that with that, we will be able to identify what is the most important spot to intervene where the device can be beneficial be it at the early stage, maybe the compression of left atrium to relieve the symptoms, at the later stage to affect the remodeling of the, of, the, of the left ventricle or alter the neuromodality response in the given patient. So I think it will be a, adding the layers as we go, as we treat these patients, uh, how these devices could be implanted. So we come to meetings like this, Horst, and we hear much about trials and how trials identify the science of the practice. How do we, what are the metrics that we use for these new devices? Is it going to be mortality? Is it going to be? Well, it's actually, I mean, when, when I hear that the team has to be formed, I absolutely agree with that. But it always also tells us that we don't really know. Uh, because otherwise, if the decisions are easy, then each of us can make his own decision. We just don't know which is the best treatment modality for a patient with dilated cardiomyopathy. Is it mitroclip? Is it uh, uh, annuloplasty? Is it something like left atrial decompression? Is it something more general like neuromodulation? Is it barostim? So all these techniques would be suitable for that particular patient, but which one is the best? We currently don't know. We have no idea. I think you are right so in that regard, because I think very important is from the very first early stage of given device, to identify the best phenotype of patients fitting for the given intervention. I think this is the key if we want to make success uh, with the adoption of the specific devices. But at the current stage, we are still in the process to find out whether Barostim, for example, is good for a patient with dilated cardiomyopathy at that stage. Correct. 
So, and when we have figured out that, then we can go ahead and, and decide, okay, now we have different options for one paper. Right. Which one is the best first? So yeah. it's a lot of work to do, actually. I agree, because I think what we are now facing is that we have very fast um, movement forward from the early signals of the efficacy in the anandomized fashion, moving to the large-scale trials. And I think we are missing this transition where we will try to understand better how the device operates and what is the best patient candidate. So that leads us then to sort of the summary. Next week in Alst, you're going to be seeing patients. What will you have to offer them next week? Again, depending on his, on his clinical problem, clinical features, clinical phenotype of the heart failure. Of course, we can offer immediately CRT if qualifying for that. We can offer, if he is very far in down sliding heart failure analysis device. Between, I think what we should not forget is how to keep these patients away from hospitals by uh, deploying uh, maybe monitoring devices, be it invasive or non-invasive, that can really help the patient out of the hospital. And then I think, uh, as this horse suggesting, we have to really try to understand what particular device will be given for the given, um, given t uh, stage and progression of the heart failure. Yeah, many of these devices are still in clinical trials, right. so we have to enroll patients in these trials. But uh, you mentioned some devices which are available. Uh, Barostem has CE mark, Mitroclip has CE mark, uh, Carillion for aneuroplasty has CE mark. The parachute device for LV aneurysms has CE mark. So there are already a, a number of devices which are available and can be used in clinical practice. This has been a tremendous interview. It's an unmet clinical need. I think that this is going to be a giant opportunity for a new frontier of treatment. We will then have to carefully select and match specific devices, specific strategies for specific patients. All of that will be aimed at obviously optimizing their life, not just necessarily the length of it, but how it is spent, improving their quality of life. We'll have many different tools in the toolbox to make that happen. But in the very end of the day, this will be another frontier for us to scale. We hope you have a great day wherever you were at. Pleasure to be here at EuroPCR. <laughs>